is the day to prove yourself in some of the things that you have done throughout the year. I just want to thank high schoolers for understanding the importance of Islamic studies and accepting to take the final without complaints, alhamdulillah, even though they are exempted and they don't have to take the final. But as we said before, if you want to rest, you don't rest. When it comes to religion, the more you get, the more you want to get. The higher you go, the higher you want to go. There is no limit that you can get to it and you say, I want to relax. The more you learn, the more you find yourself wanting to learn. So this is an opportunity to review everything you studied, to catch up on the things that you did not study, to affirm the things that you did not know as much as you should, and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like, let's say that you memorize the Islamic study book. Well, we memorize the Quran. What do we do? We just set it aside. We keep reading it. And the rewards continue to come. Same thing with hadith, same thing with rulings of Islamic studies and such. You know it, just reading it, you will be getting the rewards. So when you plan and prepare for your uh, studying, you have that in your mind. It's not like I'm studying for a test. I'm really studying to understand and I am serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while I'm doing that. It helps you focus, it helps you pay attention, and it makes you feel good. And you'll be happy that you did. Even if you don't do good in the test, you still, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did very good. Just like the person who sits to learn Quran and finds it very difficult, but he sits and tries, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him double for learning and for trying to overcome the hardship that he is meeting. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the reward is based on the hardship. The hardship that comes along with the obligation. It's not something you look for, but it's there. You want to learn, your language is not the Arabic language, and some of the letters are difficult, and some of the words are hard, and it takes you a long time before you learn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you double the reward simply because you are trying. So when you think about your life, you think this way. Always you're doing what you're doing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, and number two, to be successful in this world. A person who works for the hereafter doesn't mean he abandons this life and isolates himself from this life and doesn't study or learn some of the things in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said when he talked about Qarun, the story of Qarun, the richest man we knew, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the scholars, the people of knowledge told him, Seek with the knowledge and the money and the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the hereafter, meaning focus on the hereafter, but don't forget to enjoy yourself here the halal way and the right way. So combining the two is a guaranteed thing for the believer. But for the one who is not a believer, more than likely they try to guarantee one, which is this world and forget about the hereafter. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dispraised dunya. Why? Because it takes people away from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all the sins are committed on earth. So usually the person who is in this dunya, attached to it and inclined to do the things in it and for it, and needs to have an extra effort and pay extra attention to work for the hereafter. So working for the hereafter is not something given to you or something you really like to do. It's something you have to think and plan and work hard for. Why? Because it is against many obstacles. Yourself is not working with you. 
Shaitan will not be working with you. Dunya is not working with you. Bad friends are not working with you. Enemies are not working with you. All of those are going to be gathered against you to block you and prevent you from working for the hereafter. That's why you find people who are focusing on the hereafter find so much difficulty in the beginning and they give up. But you know anything if you're consistent, just like one wise man, he looked at an ant trying to climb on a tree. And she tried the first time and fell, and the second time and fell, and the third time and fell, and continued to try until finally climbed the tree. This is how you do it when it comes to fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You try to wake up early and do some qiyam before fajr, you might not make it. The second time, you heard the alarm, but you did not get up. The third time, you said, I will get up, and you fell asleep. The fourth time, then eventually, you will get up and you will do it. And the more you do the thing, the more you get used to it. Then after that, it becomes a habit. And it becomes something that you enjoy and something that you really don't want to give up. That's why I asked one of the classes, I said, if hijab were to be, assuming that the rulings are still there, if hijab were to be, uh, permissible. I mean, uh, no hijab is permissible. You don't have to wear hijab. How many of you will take their hijab off? The majority, they said they will not. They like it the way it is, got used to it, feel good with it, secure with it, happy with it, relaxed with it, simply because you've done it all the way. And that's the mistake that some people have, or parents, is they don't train their children when it's early. That's the advantage of Islamic schools. When you're here and you're putting the hijab from seven years old, when you become an adult, it's something that you already know and you're already doing anyway. But picture yourself, no hijab, and then when you become 14, 15, you have to do it. You're not gonna like it. And you're not gonna do it. And you're gonna fight not to do it. And you're gonna find every excuse not to do it. And the parents will be complaining. She is not wearing the hijab. She doesn't want to wear the hijab, it's too late. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us to teach our children on salah when? Age of seven. And lightly punish them at the age of 10. Why? Because at that age, they can really understand the difference between dunya and hereafter, commands and the real life. So they need to be stern with them because now they're getting close to being obligated and accounted for everything. And you are blessed, alhamdulillah, to be in Islamic school and to be with someone reminding you all the way. You see your teachers wearing the hijab, you see your parents wearing the hijab, you see your friends wearing the hijab. The environment makes a lot of difference. You are in the right place, inshallah, in the right hands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you with your examination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and make you focus and remember all the time start with bismillah and read surah al-fatiha ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you for those of you who did not pray duha prayer pray duha prayer and make dua in your sujood this is something that gets you closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and something that helps you focus because knowledge from him subhanahu wa ta'ala he can take it and he can give it and therefore you need to always be in sync with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do what he likes, not what you like. And that's the way to go. And inshallah, you'll be in good place, in the right hand, and you will not regret it. The day of judgment, inshallah, you'll be singing with those people who are ha'umukra'u kitabiyah. Look, guys, read my book, because you receive it in your right hand, and you're so excited and so happy. Think about hellfire waiting, and you're saved from it. You will be so happy, you will start screaming and yelling and showing your book to everyone to read it. Because you had certainty that this day will come and you work for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you from the successful people in this world and the hereafter. Any messages? Five. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nishhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu alaykum.